everybody. Thank you for coming to the Empires and Kingdoms book signing for the uh, first book in the series, The English Slave. My name is David Eugene Andrews. I'm author of the series, and I appreciate you coming out on this rainy day. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about how I solved a 400-year-old mystery. And basically, this mystery is was John Smith a slave? That's number one. Number two was, who was the person who bought John Smith? And three, who was the beautiful Turkish noblewoman that received John Smith as a slave? So this is the first public uh, uh, explanation of my findings. So first of all, in the late 1602, John Smith was in a battle in present-day Romania, in Eastern Europe. At age 22, he was second in command of a Transylvanian Christian army of about 12 or 13,000. He had become a captain, Captain John Smith, about a year earlier in Hungary. In eastern part of Wallachia, which is a province in uh, Romania, even today, the allies of the Ottoman Turks from the Ottoman Empire uh, found Captain John Smith. These allies were Crimean Tartars or Mongols, descendants of Genghis Khan. There's one great grandson of Genghis Khan that had become Muslim. In Crimea, present day Ukraine or Russia, depending on your political viewpoint, which I will not get into. Uh, so in Crimea, every four or five years, the Ottoman emperor at this time, Sultan Mehmet III, would ask the, his allies to join him in, in battle. So about 100,000 normally would come from Crimea on horseback in the same manner as Genghis Khan did several hundred years earlier, black sheep, skin, and, and the like, and joined the Ottoman army in Eastern Europe. At this time, it was the middle of the Long War and against the Holy Roman Empire out of um, Vienna and Prague, that's their capital. So 40,000 of these Ottoman allies, the Crimean Tartars, found Captain John Smith and his 12,000 man army in um, Romania, in the, in, in the open field. So outnumbered three or four to one in an all day battle, then they were uh, decimated basically. Captain John Smith, who this is uh, based on his memoirs, was left for dead on the battlefield. Uh, Tartar, uh, the Tartars retired, and gypsies or Roma or some type of pillager found Smith bleeding almost dead on the battlefield. But he was dressed nicely because he was second in command, right? So they recover him and take him across the Danube, and this is where the, the book opens, uh, and takes them to a Ottoman border town called Axiopolis. It's an Ottoman border town. And they sell him into slavery. So at this time, uh, he's tested, his strength tested. So he, he wrestles some other slaves. And the person identified, and this is the uh, one of the things that is a true historical fact is, uh, is the person that who bought Captain John Smith is the Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire, who is second in command, in charge of all Ottoman armies, 100,000 or more, in Eastern Europe. So the Grand Vizier, Imashi Hassan Pasha, purchases Smith at the slave auction after he wrestles. So one of the things, when you write historical fiction, is you write what you know. So in the wrestling, I, uh, as an aside, I, I wrestled, I was a, a varsity wrestler in, in, in 
junior high school. So I know how to wrestle. So when I do the scene, write the scene, the, one of the opening scenes is wrestling. So how do you move, how do you do that? Okay, I, I know that, that that's ingrained in me because I, I wrestled in, in competition. So when you write, you should always write, since there's some young people in the room, uh, about what you know. And if you don't know it, you, you acquire the skills that can do it. So anyway, uh, back to the story. Yimashin Hassan Pasha then purchases Smith after the wrestling contest and sends him in chains to his fiance. And this is the second person, uh, the person right here on the, on the book cover. And her name is Aisha, a sister of Sultan Mehmet III. So that's the second person I identified through research and through secondary and primary sources. So when he gets to Istanbul, then he talks to Aisha. He says, well, she knows Turkish and he's English, right? So how does he talk? Okay, Captain John Smith knew Italian. And Aisha knew a time. So Aisha explains to Captain John Smith that she received a letter from her fiance, uh, the Grand Vizier, Yemashi Hassan Masha, and that he wrote to uh, Aisha and told her, I beat Captain John Smith on the battlefield. Uh, he's rich, it's obvious because he's wrestled nicely. He must come from a very wealthy, noble family. And he's from Bohemia, which is Prague, the capital of the, of the Holy Roman Empire, because they're involved in a long war with the Ottoman Empire in Eastern Europe. So Captain John Smith gets mad. Because first of all, he's Captain John Smith. No one's ever beaten him on the battlefield in single combat. He has a coat of arms to prove it. Second of all, He's not from Bohemia. He's not a Bohemian or present-day Czech Republic. He's not a Bohemian. He's an Englishman that was fighting with the Holy Roman Empire. And third of all, he's not rich. So the wealth that she would be expected to get from, uh, from the ransom of him, because he's a rich nobleman, the families would normally at that time always buy their relative back. She's, she can't expect it. So she gets mad and sends him to, um, uh, to support her. So that's basically how the story opens. So this is basically a first in a five or six book series. It's a Renaissance version of the closest I can come to is Star Wars, or Game of Thrones, because I deal with the, the Sultan, I deal with the Emperor, I deal with the Queen of England, I deal with the King of France, and with the rebellions in, in Turkey and in the, the Lowlands. Uh, second of all, it's also a Game of Thrones type interaction, because there's people involved, even within the palaces, uh, intrigue and uh, Trying, people trying to move up in the ranks and other people trying to stop other people down in the ranks. So if, if you like those types of uh, uh, books or those types of movies or those types of programs, HBO, those sorts of things such as Game of Thrones or Star Wars, I think you will like this book here. Uh, so the, the second point I, I'd like to make is with regard to writing what you know. So, for example, I have Captain John Smith in Paris, and there's a murderer next door that he happens to hear about or witness or, or, or whatever. So when I was in Paris, uh, I, guess what happened? Yes, there was a murderer in the restaurant next door. Why am I mean, so, so I write about what I know, but I've had a, a lot of experiences uh, in the Middle East, I spent three uh, years and I mean three months and uh, three weeks in, uh, in uh, uh, Egypt, uh, just going through different areas. I've been to Turkey and spent three weeks in Bosnia and Eastern Europe. 
So I, I, I write about places I know, um, languages that I've studied, and so I, I hope you'd like to have this uh, book in your library and you enjoy reading. It's action-packed. Uh, do not stall. Do not stutter in the, uh, in the book. And I, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. So uh, this is just the first. Um, the next book will come out next year called Rebellion and Deceit. And we hope you like this one too. Okay, so uh, is there a question for me, buddy? Yes, I Yes, go ahead. So what's the time frame? How many years of his life does this book cover? This, this book, he's aged 22 and 1602, roughly, give or take a year. So it, it covers, uh, this book covers his early uh, childhood, I mean, from the age of 13, when he's, he's not a rich nobleman, his father died when he was 13, he was an orphan, and so he has to go and, and learn everything by himself. So, and then uh, the series basically ends in 1605, 1604. Uh, so, at least the first six books do. So, so it's the 1595, 1605 time period. I, I, I focused only on that. I have plenty of material and it goes there. It's the last part of Queen Elizabeth's reign, in, in the end of the, of the Tudor reign and Renaissance time. Does John Smith ever get out of this, or is this giving away part of the plot of your next book? Well, I mean, John, Captain John Smith uh, in 1607 was the, elected the first colonial governor of Virginia. Okay, then how yeah, did so, get so, so, so we don't go that far. And so yes, he oh. does. He, he, he does in, in book five. To, uh, oh, I see. Uh, it, you know. He's no longer a slave at that at that point. So is the next book about him getting over to Virginia? Uh, no, the, the, this uh, that's after 1607 and, and we end in, six, in uh, 1605. Oh, so, 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 so yeah, two or three years yeah. too, too early for that. How do, you, how do you create any kind of tension When you know, we, we know that he's going to make it through eventually, and if it's like the, the threat of death, can it ever be real? Because we know that eventually he's going to make it to Virginia. But as in writing that, how do you take that into account to make a scene with him, any kind of combat scene with him? Uh, well, I, I try to, I, I try to get into the uh, scene and in into the setting uh, at that particular time, so he doesn't know what's going to happen. So I, I, I just focus on the scene. Characters on there um, and, and what they're doing, uh, and, and a, a, a third point as far as um, uh, writing what you know. Uh, I do have a battle, only one battle in here, which is a sea battle between the, the English fleet, uh, by led by Sir Walter uh, Raleigh, uh, in 1595-1596 uh, against the Spanish in Cadiz, and so. Uh, one of the characters there uh, goes, uh, dies, and um, and that person is a, a, a member, remembered by uh, John Dunn, the poet, and the, and the poet says further than, uh, no man goes further than uh, John Wingfield, further than this no man goes. So that, if you, if you, you know your Star Trek type of thing. That's where that's the origin. Actually, that is the actual origin of the Star Trek thing, where you can explore the worlds no one's seen. And that but that whole point is based. You can find out the truth about where that Star Trek thing came from in this book. We've done a lot of research on this because historical fiction, you got to do a lot of research. And I saw there's illustrations in there as well. Where are you basing some of this information on about um, John Smith? How did you find out? What's the historical basis for it? So you have illustrations there. Yeah, Can you tell us? There's lots of I put illustrations, maps, and everything's uh, aids so that you can uh, help with that. 
Where, how did you find the story? Like, where, what sources did you go to? Well, the original uh, source uh, was John uh, Smith's memoirs that he wrote in 1630. Uh, then everything else was uh, verified um, by memoirs in different languages. So it, a lot of us in, in Italian when you're talking about Istanbul, because the Venetian um, ambassador was a main source of um, what's happening in the Ottoman Empire. There are some Turkish history, early history that's uh, translated into English that we use. Um, there's uh, French, Dutch type sources, because the Dutch were involved in um, fighting the Spanish at this time, and the French were allies or Henry Lafon was uh, an ally of Queen Elizabeth. And this was the last year of her reign in 1602. Yes? So did you uh, get these sources in different languages? Did you have to learn them? They're not all translated. No, no a lot. Of, uh, so I used uh, two major sources, Google Translate, of course, uh, Reversal, uh, but they don't really translate, it's like uh, translating Shakespearean English. If you ever try to do that with Google, it does not really work. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, it's reading, it's just getting involved. You, know, you, you learn, uh, you, you know, the basic story, and then you find different tidbits uh, from the different sources. So uh, this, this one was, uh, this book I used mainly Italian sources primary sources. So I, so I had to learn different languages. So part of the reason it takes a while to write this is that I had to learn the languages. But when you sit down and try to come up with a premise for a book, how did you decide that this was a good premise? Well, I, so recognizing, one of the things uh, I recognize is that this is a great story. I don't, and where what, did you find the story? Oh well, I, I was just I was doing some work on, on Jamestown, uh, maybe 15 years ago, and uh, so then I, I I looked at this and I said, okay, this guy uh, faced death uh, a dozen or more times when he wasn't in battle. You know, he's a he's a soldier, so he always faced death there. You expect that he, he faced death, uh, you know, almost starvation one time for a storm another time and, and all. thrown into the middle of the Mediterranean without a life raft, without a, uh, a life jacket because he's playing for a storm. Okay, so it's a, the, and they say, oh, oh, that can't be true. Oh, um, yeah. So later, at, at, back in Virginia, he's surrounded by 300 uh, Native Americans with four other guys. Not, not our friends from off time, but these, these are soldiers. And uh, uh, it's the uncle of uh, Pocahontas. So he's, they're ready to kill him, right? So he made it to Jamestown, but he, they're, they're, he's sentenced to immediate death. You know, 300 to five. Is he just a scrappy so, 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 and he has, he has one gun, one shot. Okay, so after you read my series, of course he's going to get out, right? Why, why does I, no he, one like him? <laughs> so, 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 so what, what happened is that the uh, uh, I'll tell you this story since it's not in my series, and so I'm not giving anything away. But he he, he took the 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 uncle that was threatening him, the leader of the three hundred uh, Native Americans or uh, Virginians. And it has long hair, so he takes the, the he grabs the, the hair by the back, puts puts the pulls the head back, puts the gun right there, one shot. Okay, let him go. So it, it's it's like things you would never think as a fiction writer. I I started out writing fiction and things on like that, and what happened is every time I come up with great ideas, quote unquote great ideas, and then I find the real stuff. And say, I gotta rewrite the whole scene because this is so much better than what I thought. So uh, that's why that's why I like historical fiction. 
Um, most people like historical fiction because it brings them back to the time. So uh, you know, this is, this is uh, I think uh, you'd be, the reviews have been very good, so I, I, I'll let them speak for themselves and we'll tell them to my own point of view. Yes? So where did you find all this? The illustrations and maps and things for your book? Uh, illustrations and maps. Uh, maps, I, I drew a lot of them myself. Might as well improve your talents in different ways. You know, build, build your skills up. Uh, I, the illustrations, I, I, <coughs> I, know, I, I believe in copyright law a, a lot and protecting intellectual property, uh, whether it be patents, trademarks, or copyrights. And so the illustrations are taken from books over 100 years old. So they're all out of copyright um, and further back to go. So I bought the old books. And I don't risk someone claiming that um, they own it because I took a picture of it in the last year. So putting it on Google. Plus the resolution on the internet is not as good as putting it. Those are good questions. Well, well thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, this this series, uh, Empires and Kingdoms, based on true events. It's the Renaissance version of uh, Star Wars. It's the Renaissance uh, version of Game of Thrones. So uh, and thank you today for all your uh, help. And yeah, one is more question. Is the first in the series? Yes, this is the very first book in the series. Uh, the whole series has been uh, written uh, at least 50% done on. So I, I, if, as we perfect it, then we'll bring out the next ones. Have you ever thought about doing a uh, television show or a movie with uh, We'll see what happens on those fronts. I, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's, I, I think, how many people here would like it? A, a, a movie or... Our, our television program. Yeah, of course. Yes. I, okay, so, so that's 100% approval. A lot of people want a television series our thing, and this this great audience to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.